Okay, our next question is, how does the United Nations contribute to sustainable development? I think the United Nations has had a long-term commitment to the concept of sustainable development and implementing the concept, which uh, another a lot of organizations now talk about sustainability or sustainable development, but they're pretty new on the scene. Whereas you can go back to uh, the UN Stockholm Conference, 1972, was re wrestling with issues of the environment and poverty and how to do development in a way that addressed those. Uh, you, you, in the 1970s and early 80s, you had a lot of development that was failing. So if you think of some of these huge projects that were funded by the World Bank, uh, you know, these dam projects, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, they were building very large dams that would end up devastating a lot of traditional communities and cultures, yeah. the, the villages that were living in those water basins, um, a lot of environmental degradation occurring because of the development. That was the challenge. The UN realized we can't do development as usual. The, the whole modernization paradigm has failed or is failing. We, we do development and there ends up being more problems than we, when, what we started with. So during the 1980s, the United Nations had the, the World Commission on Environment and Development and they tasked this group with conceptually coming up with an idea of how to do development that simultaneously addressed on the one hand the needs of the most marginalized, the poorest people on the planet and at the same t who needed development and yet at the same time uh, did not uh, create environmental degradation but actually built up the capacity of natural systems, ecosystems uh, that supported life on the planet. So, so they really were good at posing the question. And so then in 1987, uh, the World Commission on Environment and Development, they ended up giving their Brundtland report or Our Common Future that g actually gave sort of the quintessential definition of sustainable development, which was meeting the needs of the present generation without undermining the capacity of future generations to meet their own needs. And that in itself had two key aspects. The idea is can we do development that improves, has an ongoing improvement in people's quality of life while living within the uh, limits of the supporting ecosystems. Uh, because it put that emphasis on the value of future generations of human beings, it implicitly then emphasized the importance of ecosystems, which we hadn't done before, and they put the environment central. So then, in 1992, the Rio Earth Summit uh, was a landmark summit where the global leaders said, well, let's can we do this thing called sustainable development that the World Commission asked for? And what was quite novel about that is it was all levels of government that were supposed to take a lead. So it wasn't just state governments, but you saw a lot of local Agenda 21s, they called them, uh, municipalities starting to build sustainable development as a concept into what they were doing. And then the business community also got interested in that. So uh, the, you have a World Council on Business and Sustainable Development. Uh, and they start saying, well, can we look at that in relation to what we were doing? And the UN pioneered, in my view, uh, a valuation of things that have been not valued. With that definition of sustainable development, all of a sudden it said, we need to look at not simply physical capital in terms of machines, equipment, and so on. We can't just look at financial capital in terms of money. We have to look at the neglected forms of capital. So they really, in my view, almost coined the terms natural capital in a political way, in a policy yeah. way. The idea of natural capital, that we could measure our fish stocks, that we could measure forests and, and see that as an asset that we would value, and we'll start valuing people for a change. Let's talk about human capital and the value of people's health and well-being uh, and the ability of healthy human beings uh, who have various capabilities to, uh, to do various productive things in society. And then the, then the other one, which I think was really important that brought all of that together, was looking at kind of the cultural capital or the social capital, seeing the relationships between people 
and the value, placing value on their actual communities and histories of those communities uh, in order to get things done. Because, and, and a lot of this is common sense now, but you know, the UN noticed, look, if you've got a society where there's rampant corruption, where the laws aren't respected, well, how do you do any meaningful development within that context? But that's all about a lack of social capital, right? Uh, or the idea of poverty, too. Recognizing that it's not simply income poverty anymore, but any deprivation in human well-being is important. And the idea of sustainable development, it was such a, uh, in a way, a very radical concept that it allowed a continuous exploration of these ideas. So it's, it's a constructive critique of our global market systems, in a way, and recognizing that there are more productive systems than just the market as well. Recognizing that non-governmental organizations play a role, that there is a role for government. So for all of those who've been attacking the sort of neoliberal attack on government institutions over the last 30 years, it's, this is saying, no, no, government has a role to play. We aren't the only player, but we certainly have a role to play in all of this. Uh, faith organizations, households, scholarly communities all have a role to play in advancing sustainable development. Well, that was a whole new idea of what production should look like. It's not just market production anymore. Think about the role of a lot of environmental NGOs or human service, non-governmental organizations, and the role those play. So here was a concept that was able to constructively critique the, f the failing development paradigm and at the same time integrate a large number of players into a system. And yet it was being stick-handled, if I can use the term, Sustainable development has been a concept that has been stick-handled by the United Nations for the last 40 years and is embedded throughout the whole UN framework. So you actually now have not only regular summits that take place on sustainable development. So from 1992, the Commission for Sustainable Development met every year. You had side commissions meeting on specific problems, whether it's looking at gender issues and women in development, or looking at desertification, looking at climate change. All of that emerged out of this agenda that the UN uh, was, was putting forward. Uh, then in 2002, you had the Johannesburg Summit, uh, which was Rio plus 10. And then a year ago, you had the Rio Earth Summit. And these, these aren't going away. These are getting further developed. The concepts are being elaborated. So now in 2012, they're going to have sustainable development goals that reinforce the Millennium Development Goals that were adopted to deal with issues of pro chronic poverty, but also environmental degradation. Uh, really a fascinating, a fascinating uh, uh, approach. And so the UN system basically has that embedded in their various agencies, their various offices. So if you look at uh, UNESCO, the scientific organization, and its focus on sustainable development. In 2005, we had what was declared a decade of education for sustainable development, because all of a sudden educators realized, look, we are central to this agenda. We need to include the United Nations University and these broader cultural and scientific organizations. Um, uh, things like the U UN Environmental Program, uh, UN Habitat, which focuses on human settlement. All of these are issues of sustainable development. Another key thing, now the UN might not be good at answering that problem, the question, but coming up with the right question was really important. As yeah. a philosopher, I realize it's often more difficult to come up with the right set of questions than you can then figure out the answers once you know what the question is. And so to have come up with uh, an operational concept like sustainable development uh, that could be asking the right questions, and then in turn, coming up with the right measurements. So we realized, well, if we're going to start measuring human capital, natural capital, we have to start gathering indicators. So even though a lot of these systems have declined over the last 10, 20 years, and we all know it, at least we know something about these systems. We know a heck of a lot more, say, about climate change and what's going on because of intergovernmental panels on, on climate change or what's going on with desertification, what's going on with movement of peoples, and so on, because we have indicators. Once you have indicators of these things, then you can start actively saying, well, we'll try this program. How did it impact this indicator? 
how did it impact biodiversity? We've, we're actually measuring biodiversity. Uh, so the UN has, has done some critical things in that regard. Uh, various secretariats and conventions uh, on sustainable development issues. I, I mentioned the one on climate change, but there's one dealing with the certification, things doing with basic human rights. Uh, and even the earlier work that the UN General Assembly did looking at people having uh, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. I mean, this is coming out of the 1960s, and we're talking about economic rights, which is a real innovation in terms of saying, you know, people have a right to have a, a decent livelihood. They have a right to shelter, uh, proper health care. Uh, it sets these aspirational goals, which now are, I think are embedded within the global community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's where the UN has played a, a key role in, in providing the resource base to actually operationalize a concept and then bring together the broad diversity of stakeholders that you need to address sustainable development.